guess we're getting somewhere now with this. The, and this this is an example of people like uh, Jeremy Judge Jeremy Johnson KC, who was just Jeremy Johnson QC, and writing absolute complete tosh about privileges when Erskine Thompson made a book that he references is completely contrary to what he claimed in the court. And, you know, Johnson was writing complete and absolute tosh to a court, and now he's being raised up to be a high court judge. And then we've got the other case of the congestion charge, Swift, Judge Swift. He actually was judging the case when five councils, five councils challenge the Eulers against the mayor, but they only challenge the spread of it. They're not saying, just a minute, you can't have tolls. They're saying, you can't spread this, you les, right? In fact, the Tory council don't want to prove that um, the Magna Carta Clause is in, is in effect because the Tory council don't want to get rid of the congestion charge. Swift, judging it, worked. When the Blair government was in place, Swift was a, an attorney working for the government. Um, meddling around in the finances. So, if anything, he's helped build the whole fines and charges and government charges. Later on, he sat judging it, his own handiwork, or close enough. I'm not saying that is exactly 100% true, but that's more of a general thing. But then he's been put as a reward for his services, put in charge of the Boundary Commission when the Liberty of London is a particular boundary. It's the Liberty of London, and it's actually a, a Liberty Cap ship. These people are all set up for to continue and protect corrupt practices. Now, anyway, I've got, I found, we've got this, you know, this, um, the, there's some information here on, on someone else with the same idea that I've got, uh, and it, it clearly is something that was knocking around, um, and people have questioned it. So here, but this is Josie, a barrister, right? And th this is th this is how you get shot down by this um, tosh, and, and no, not me talking tosh. So this claims to be a barrister website, right? <clears throat> this is what it says, right? London congestion charge versus the Magna Carta, legal or not. Someone's asking some online solicitors, but we don't even know who they are um, on this website. London congestion charge versus the Magna Carta, legal or not. Magna Carta congestion charge, clause 13, privileges of the City of London. The City of London shall enjoy its ancient liberties and free customs both by land and water. We also will and grant that all of us cities, boroughs, towns, and ports shall enjoy their liberties and free customs, right? So, so that that is basically the Magna Carta law, and no judgments or orders can be made against Magna Carta, and and it's not meant to be able to be repealed, right? Um, and there's also substitute that the ancient and any orders against the liberties of London are void, but it's a toll, right? It's to do with tolls through London and charges. Now, here we go here, right? Hello. The clause you mentioned, is that from Magna Carta, right? He said that. Yes, I'm not sure what impact that has upon the congestion charge. Well, she's saying that she's not sure what it has, but the reference of a case in a second, which is quite important, I've actually got something to go on now. If you are seeking to argue that the Magna Carta overthrows fining without trial, well, it's got nothing to do with whether it's a trial or not. Fining without trial, it's got nothing to do with a fine. London shall have its ancient free liberties, which is meant to be the free passage, right? Free passage of London without any tolls, and you can't have any tax on personal property, right? What's it got to do with being fined? A toll is you shall not pass through this place unless you pay money, right? Um, basically, a payment. It's a payment, 
right, to use a road of any form or means, right, taking payments to to pass by land, right? It doesn't matter if the payments are tall or fine or whatever, it's still a payment, right? Um, but then it's seen without trial. But what's it got to do with the trial or not? No one cares. <laughs> it's got... It, 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 when you've got an ancient li a right or liberty that says you can travel through London without having to pay at all, what the hell has that got to do with whether you get trial or not? <laughs> because it, it, it's to do with ex the, the exchange of monies for any reason whatsoever in order for you to move around by land, right? That's a toll, right? <clears throat> you shall not come through this area or move along a road without handing money over in any form or means, right? Now, she says that, um, she says that, then this issue has been considered in a case called Crittenden in relation to the Bill of Rights. But she's just said this, this, she's just said if you're asking to challenge the Magna Carta, but now she's saying that the matter has been challenged in a case called Crittenden, which that is very useful information. But in relation to the Bill of Rights, well, the Bill of Rights is not Magna Carta. So if it, if, if it was settled in a case called Crittenden in relation to the Bill of Rights, that's not in relation to Magna Carta. And it has been held that this is not a fine or forfeiture within the meaning of the Bill of Rights. Well, it wouldn't be a fine or forfeiture within the meaning of the Bill of Rights because the Magna Carta Clause isn't in the Bill of Rights. And it's not a fine, it's a toll. <laughs> And it doesn't really matter how you word it. Um, you you know, <clears throat> if you can't pass through there without paying money, then it's against your ancient rights and libbies. But this that that there's so uh, we got this word now, Crittenden. That's the magic word. I can do some research now. I've got this magic word, Crittenden. So um, I have to thank her for that. The fact that we have. Legal freedoms either overtly enshrined in law or implicitly in that there is no law prohibi prohibiting them does not mean that Parliament cannot legislate. Well, it does. It does, Josie, because it's uh, explicit, specific, specific, explicit, specific, specific, explicit, specific law saying that any judgment, right, and you can't really enforce anything without a judgment eventually if you refuse to pay it, right, because even if they send the bailiffs out to get the money off you, a judge has got to authorise that, right? <clears throat> or someone, even if it's the mayor himself, even if the mayor's using judicial authority, still a judgment, right? Parliament cannot let it says that any any judgment you make against the Great Charter is void, right? The, it doesn't matter what Parliament do. It says against the Great Charter. If the Great Charter says you shan't. No one pays any fines through London. It doesn't matter what legislation you make. And it even says that if you seek to rep repeal any of uh, the statutes or even um, it says that you can't legislate against Mag Magna Carta. There were, there, were, there were several statutes all saying, you, uh, and, then it, and when she's saying here, yeah, Parliament cannot legislate, making the legislation through Parliament is making an order because the king makes the order by giving it royal assent. The king is making the order. If the king makes any order against Magna Carta, it is it's, it's void. It says... You can't make an order against Magna Carta. A Magna Carta can't be repealed either. And if you seek to repeal it, you're a traitor, right? So even the king cannot make an order against it. Um, so Josie really doesn't know what she's talking about. This section implies freedom. It's ancient lives in free customs, both by land and water, also by land and water, could apply to travel. Also, free customs has many forms, the right to roam, visit and worship. 
I was born in London, also my place of birth. His previous relation to the legal fining case that you quoted was the monetary aspect. I was hoping it applied to the freedom to travel without any charge whatsoever. Well, it does. You don't need to hope. I expect, like many cases, a way around it was found. Well, no, it wasn't. It's just that no one knows what they're talking about. And at the time, 2002, we didn't really have the internet and we didn't have as much social media as we have now. And even if anyone did know about it, uh, they just send complaints into the government and they just ignore it and brick wall you like TFL are doing, which I'll show you in a minute. Because they And then they employ staff there who really are like amoebas and don't really know what they're talking about. And even Queen Elizabeth... In 1967, Queen Elizabeth repeals those Magna Carta clauses, right? Except those four. Yet Parliament opens with a, a statement and petition from the Chancellor and Speaker of Parliament that all of the ancient rights and liberties that have ever have been and ever were, uh, we open Parliament with these laws. Well, how can you open them with with them when he, when she's repealed half of them? Now she's kept the first part of Magna Carta, which is actually got the Charter of Liberties in it and the Edward Confessor laws. But there's the other rights, ancient rights and privileges in the rest of Magna Carta, some of which are the peerage rights, and this is what uh, Elizabeth's repealed. So. When they open Parliament and say, we buy open Parliament with all of the ancient rights and liberties that have been bestowed on us and, and ever will be, then they haven't because Liz Betts repealed half of them in 1967. So that's a lie. They're lying. And you, you need to call these people out with their gold-plated chamber of tosh, their gold-plated chamber of green upholstered bollock, right? Um, this is when you've got to call them out. This is when you get Not My King or um, Republic Campaign, um, you know, doing demonstrations uh, at the coronation. This is when you get a Big Brother Watch handing petitions in, opposing... Um, Current uh, digital currency and facial recognition. This is when you get um, Double Down News, you know, doing the arrest Tony Blair campaign, and three people try, but yet <clears throat> they don't stop him from doing this congestion charge. The problem is, is that it, firstly they get people in the positions mainly in the complaints departments who don't really have any authority and aren't really that intelligent. Secondly. We didn't have as much information at the time, and people who knew couldn't really do anything about it unless you had a lot of money to do a legal case, and then we've got that case there. Then some of these cases are not legitimate and not really honest people really having a good try, and they're not good enough at trying. Sometimes they're, they're rigged cases like with Jonathan Swift as the judge who worked for the government building the illegal congestion charge and other various finance things, most likely. Um, and the whole, you know, five, five Tory councils who are pro-congestion charge and fines in general pretending to oppose ULES. Um, it's a showcase. Even to pursue an argument based on the Magna Carta definition would be expensive and prohibit any further action. No, it's, well, it's not expensive when you complain to the Judicial Conduct Investigations Office because the whole thing's corrupt. Um, um, Parliament effectively is lying when it opens because it's opening on a statement which is false and uh, fraudulent uh, and can't possibly be true due to logic. And then... Um, hold on a minute. The fundamental problem with these pieces of our constitution is that they were intended for a different mischief. No, they weren't! The, the Liberty of London is intended to not allow any fines or tolls to be in London for route of passage because it's the custom of England, the tradition. We're not going to charge anyone any money from traveling for traveling through London, right? That's what it's intended for, nothing else. And what this greedy government now is doing is charging people through London. But why? 
Because whatever law there is and whatever rights they are, there's nothing they love better than cheating. Everything that says you can't do it, they'll do it. Why? Because they like to prove they can do it. Because it says you can't. And this is the thing with Tony Blair. I mean, most people don't know that much about Tony Blair. I didn't, you know. Oh, he's got a hole in his sweater. He's a Labour Party guy, you know, something to do with Sedgefield, you know. But no, he's not actually anything to do with the North East of England uh, and the Labour Party, really. Uh, he actually was born in Scotland. He went to a posh private school in Scotland, then to Oxford. Then he became a lawyer at Lincoln's Bar and started doing law. So he actually is a lawyer, but in employment law. Then he met his wife. Then he got involved in politics. Then they're both crap lawyers. They're both rubbish. You've got to have a sandwich short of a picnic to be the Prime Minister of England. Look at Boris Johnson. If you actually are intelligent and of a wide consciousness, you can't do the job because there's too much things to know um, that are overwhelming. You've got to be a retard. You've got to actually be retarded in the brain to be the Prime Minister, which means that you don't know all the laws and you don't understand how they all work properly. Tony Blair broke the country. Now, he actually... The, the problem is, though, that the underlying core of the, 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 the royals... They, they hate rights and privileges. They can't stand them because it's things they can't do. There's, but these people are supreme beings. They think that there's nothing they can't do. It's a challenge. It's a thrill, even. A thrill. It's thrilling and exciting, right? John Major was the Muppet tool to bring the military-style speed cameras in. John Major, that's against Magna Carta, because Sheriff's Cattle, please. After Lisbeth had repealed it in 1967, illegally, that must have been a thrill and a half, even though you can't do it because Parliament needs it to open with, right? And then after the John Major Muppet, here's another um, scapegoat, Another puppet muppet, Blair, who thinks that he's a champion of the working class when he's never seen the working class. He went to Lincoln's Bar and is a lawyer, a really rubbish lawyer, who he goes to a man from Lincoln's Bar, studies law, further takes Magna Carta away from us, illegally. And that's uh, another muppet tool, the Eli Allen Bastard, you know, the new statesman. Um... When you can't have any tolls through London, so he gets a congestion charge. That must have been another thrill for Lisbeth, you know. Um, how many crack bombs does she need to drop? They must have been they must have been um they must have been having an absolute um orgasmic party behind the curtain with these Muppets. M Major Blair, you know, there's something wrong with this country and these people right Blair needs to go to prison for the rest of his life on this planet right never mind an all in his sweater and John Major the always oh, in with the um you know the uh, cricket club you know the Salvation Army man the charity bloke, but no, John Major, Philip Windsor's major military man, just the man to bring in the speed cameras, the military cameras, the royal emblem on them all around the country, completely and totally, illegally and criminally. Again, um, it's like Dad's Army, you know, it literally is like a scene from Dad's Army. Wandering around looking for sausages. John Major. Oh, you know, um, he, where's my sausages? You know, oh, salute. He literally straight out of a dad's army scene. These people don't actually understand what the fuck they are actually fucking doing to the fabric of fucking reality for this actual laws 
and the rights of England because they get into these positions and they think they can do anything on absolute roller coaster ride Dutch psychotic energy. They think they can do anything like Trump. Yet Trump is there and now they're saying, oh, it's not, it's only a bit of fraud. It's not even serious. It's not even a serious crime. It's a little bit of fraud, you know. But if someone headbutts someone in the street, oh, that's serious. It's dangerous. Can't go anywhere now. It's dangerous. These people are dangerous. Trump is dangerous. Major is dangerous. Blair is dangerous. These people are not just dangerous on the street. They're dangerous to the entire history of England for money. Taxes, fines and pulling one over on the population. Charlatan conmen of the greatest caliber conceivable in the mind of a human. Tony Blair. And that's on top of his war crimes. Because of this, Tosh, lawyers who have not got a clue what the fuck they are doing. In reality, the Liberty of London is from the Watling Street and Ermine Street, the Roman routes and previous routes. And it is meant to be a route where you don't get harassed or stopped on. The legendary ancient routes of England of free passage. Then we get these internet stupid monkey sites. Um, this is going to be entertaining researching this Crittenden case, which most likely will be another load of tosh on top of Judge Swift's tosh on top of Jeremy Johnson's tosh. Because what we seem to have is a queue of charlatans. I think Lincoln's Inn must be like a revolving door of charlatans. A revolving door of charlatans in Lincoln's Inn, in and out. It's like teaching you how to be a criminal. You go into Lincoln's bar and you come out a professional criminal. An absolute total criminal. You're educated to be a criminal in Lincoln's bar.